Ba-dum, bum, bum. All right. Hey, Internet. Welcome back to another notes video. Uh, it's 8.08 p.m. Uh, on November 14th. So I say that because I don't know when I'm going to get around to editing this. Uh, if if I do get around to editing this. In retrospect, I might be like, eh, it wasn't the best place. Um, I got a new microphone because I wanted these videos to be like, yeah, hey, I can chill and not worry about a single mic over there. So hopefully the audio levels are fine, not too loud. We'll see. Um, I'm leaving for a flight tomorrow morning, and so I have to wake up at 3 in the morning. Uh, and I'll go to bed in like an hour. I don't know. Uh, anyway, today I wanted to talk about uh, defining dreams, dreams, uh, personal growth, habits, and lifestyle. Uh, you know, I've been thinking a lot about various things. Uh, I think in summary, uh, recently I'm um, adapting to having a full-time job in software engineering and also studying for this Japanese exam that I'm not prepared for, likely won't be prepared for in such a small amount of time. And it's pushing me very hard. <laughs> um, I think I've been anxious about it, uh, a few different things lately and it's manifesting itself in various different ways. Um, uh, anyway, you know, I so a lot of these discoveries are, are from Japanese, which is a, a self-learning endeavor. Um, the last two days I had some family visiting, so I wasn't doing anything for Japanese. And you know, I just did two half an hour sessions for my reviews today. Um, I got from 680 reviews down to 268 uh, with 91 cards to learn. So whatever 268 plus 91 is plus 26 new words. But all the new words at this point are katakana, so it doesn't make sense. If you don't know what notes videos are, by the way, I'm rambling. I have some bullet points, no structure here, no script. Um, some life lessons that I've come to discover recently. Um, what I've connected it to, hopefully it helps someone else out there, you know. My name is Mark. Uh, I'm a software engineer. Uh, graduated from college just under a year ago um, and, you know, teaching myself Japanese, taking the JLPT N3, which is the medium level proficiency exam. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, so I feel like I've been growing a lot in the last two months. Uh, in some senses, good, but it's pushing me to the sense of not collapse, but um, really like I'm at a point where I'm like, oh, I'm slipping again. But this time I caught myself slipping as opposed to previous times when, when I didn't catch myself. Um, and, you know, that's a step in the right direction. So, for example, I was waking up at 6 a.m. every single day, uh, changed to 5.30 and then after for CrossFit, and then I stopped CrossFit because I found it, you know, it wasn't my thing. Um, and then my wake-ups got pushed back, and now they're just all over the place. And I've successfully never woken up past, like, 9.00. Um, which I think is good. I, I do like mornings. Uh, eight's like the latest I've gotten up. But I want to keep it up in the mornings. And what I found was I kept procrastinating my Japanese studies uh, to do my reviews at like 10 p.m., which was not good because I don't want to go be to bed at 12 and be like, oh, I'll wake up so I have, you know, my seven hours of sleep. Um, that's not that's not what I'm after here. I'm after early wake-ups and therefore going to bed. And so just a couple days ago, I was like, all right, no, no, like I have to force a cutoff at 10 p.m. Um, and therefore, my deadline is not midnight. It is 10 p.m. So, okay, let's actually get to these bullet points. Because um, it was really hard to get to work lately. Today, I just kept, you know, going to Twitter, going to YouTube. Um, and, it, uh, you know, their devices and stuff. And, and I did some, some visualization and I kind of... Mentally stepped away from Twitter. I was like, you know what? God, it's, it was fascinating, but I'm just, it's too much. A um, little visualization, and now I've stepped away from it. So we've got a little hodgepodge of things here, because I just wanted to, I wanted to talk about this a bit. Uh, I hope this works. If it's too far away, you can't hear me. Uh, but the levels are looking good, so we'll see. I think this is how you hold the microphone. Hide my chin in case I have something on it. Uh, reading our envelope uploaded today. Uh, anyway, um, I have a quote here. It's in quotes. I think it's my own. Progress sneaks up on you, and in this case, my progress has been a failure. And my reflections have become sudden but bountiful, so I wanted to talk a bit about my perceived failures and what I'm learning from it. I know why that's in quotes now, because that was supposed to be the hook for this video. <laughs> Four minutes in. Very nice. Um, yeah, my progress has been a failure. That's kind of deep. So, 
Um, I was watching a podcast by Cody Co. He's an online content creator dude. And he, he's been training for her for running in ultra marathons and stuff. And he, he said this thing that stuck with me. And it was effectively, I talked about this in a video game therapy, one of the top left corner, top right corner, sorry. Uh, and he was like, you know, your habits catalyze a change for your lifestyle. Um, you know, you gotta, you don't trust the process to get you somewhere. You trust the process to make an, a new lifestyle. And this kind of hit me because I, you know, last week I hit about three hours every single day studying for Japanese across reviews and specifically grammar books. And I'm on paid time off this week. So while I'm away, I'm not going to try and be working all the time, but there will be times when uh, I'm doing work probably. And that is just going to be studying for Japanese. And, um, but that aside, it's just realizing that if I can make this time for Japanese all of a sudden, if I can look back on Toggle and see all these cool little statistics, what can't I put that time into? Uh, you know, art has been this demon, <laughs> this battle I've been fighting for a while to become a good artist. And, you know, this might be the most potent example, but a lot of people, myself included, want to be good at something, but don't want the work to get there. You know, for guitar, I kind of realized my end goal, like, yeah, I wanted to play it, but I didn't want to learn to practice it. And I think this lifestyle change thing is so well demonstrated in that if your goal is to become a great artist, that takes, you know, working on one piece for a week. That takes working hours every day. That takes uh, a certain amount of time and effort to make good art. Um, you know, if you watch a non-time lapse video, it's several hours when people make these digital pieces. And so, as you you make that goal, okay, become a good artist. In my instant, in my instance, I think you should specify that goal. I want to make game art. I want to make art specifically in this style. I want to, you know, from my ten-year-old self, finally draw this imaginary friend. So those goals get more specific. And so, reaching that goal is important you know that's what you're going for but when you get there running an ultra marathon learning to run every day recovering from shin splints studying japanese in order to take an exam which is then to take one day you know speak it in a, some conversationally fluent way um these goals catalyze your your lifestyle to change and so for japanese my lifestyle is now well, you know, getting myself to read more books, to practice for the exam and studying for the exam using these grammar books and all that. And, you know, once I pass the Japanese exam, I don't want to just stop all this. The point is to then keep going, to then make those books more of a daily routine, watch all the uh, media I consume in Japanese and all that. And so when we work for these goals, we're not you know, you're working for the goal and you're taking those steps, but those steps create a lifestyle of their own. Um, create a lifestyle of their own. So once you hit that goal, you can kind of keep going. And I'm not really sure why my progress has been a failure exactly. I guess I'll get to that in a bit. But your progress sneaks up on you. You know, now I can I can read a lot of kanji, no problem. I can read hiragana, katakana, no problem. I can hear a lot of things when I'm listening to TV shows and make a lot of connections. But it's the lifestyle change that I'm really after. And that's really the important part. Um, with running, running every morning, yeah, you know, it is to get fit, but that's a habit and a routine I want to build. And that will catalyze change for a better lifestyle. I'm not getting up in the morning and just browsing social media. Um, what really hit me today was looking back on things and, you know, my, I guess my goal kind of, uh, is when I'm 24, 25 in a few years, I want, I don't want to be, Oh, I wish I learned Japanese. Oh, I really want to learn Japanese. Oh, I want to be a good runner. Oh, I don't want to be saying these things. Um, you know, a lot of these are in my control. Like learning Japanese is completely in my control, more or less. Whereas YouTube, not particularly. I can make this video. I think this is cool content to listen to, to watch maybe, even though this video might be a half an hour. <laughs> um, you know, what if I just post this unedited? You know, what happens? That's in my control to make it, 50% to make it, 50% for the universe to, you know, full send, right? If make a typing video, odds of the universe is going to take it are much, much higher. Um, 
so what hit me today was the deathbed angle. Uh, that's capital D, capital A, the deathbed angle. Um, you know, there's the extreme version, right, where you're on your deathbed and you're looking back on your life. And, you know, I was talking with a friend of mine and it's in his case, it's kind of like he'd be on his deathbed and be like, oh, I really wish I wrote that book. And he's making great progress on that book. Um, and, you know, I try to define what my dream is, who I want to become. I don't I live so much of my life knowing the things I don't want to do and the people I don't want to be like, but I don't know what I want to to be what that dream is and i'm I'm kind of working on discovering that right now um so it's a little difficult to be like oh i wish i did this but you know in that theme of knowing what not to be i know that i'm not going to look back and be like i ah, really wish i finished that last episode of whatever show um and it, it's hard to always remember this you know you you have to kind of give in to the present a little bit you have to give the present you you know oh, sweet new moist critical video great um, oh man, My Hero Academia, new every Saturday. That's what I want my Saturday mornings to be. Love it. Spy X family a little bit. Love it. But kind of, you know, I should start recording on my surface so I can like, ro like draw stuff as we go. <laughs> um, you know, but you don't look back and think those are the things you want. And it's so easy to, to say, oh, I'll instrument a plan. I'll say none of that until the night. You know, in the morning, do this. In the day, have only these things have a not to do list whatever it might be but it's harder to just do it it's really important to do it though Stephen Pressfield in The War of Art calls this the resistance and it's something I've been facing a lot uh, in the last whatever I've been very aware of myself in some senses but anyway the deathbed angle also has a lighter perspective and this perspective is one that I kind of just not discovered but it's a perspective I discovered today um, I looked at the deathbed angle and I said, okay, let's, let's stop being so extreme because someone can come along and say, oh, but you know, what if, I was doing the microphone, sorry, I think a guard did though. Anyway, you know, what if you, you are on your deathbed and you're like, oh, I never would have finished that game anyway. I might've gone out and enjoyed watching whatever. Well, I don't agree with that fully, but there is some sense of like, you might feel more fulfilled if you had worked on that game or worked on that video or whatever. And so something I used to do a while ago is, or I should say something I explored a while ago was this notion that if I do everything now, then my time is free for what unexpectedly occurs in the future. Uh, and so, you know, in, in this case for traveling, it's kind of like what I do now before I actually go prepares me for, yeah, my family came to visit, right? My dad and my sister. If I had done more Japanese, I could have felt less stressed over the weekend. Um, so if I had done these things beforehand, so to speak, if I did these things in the morning rather than wait for when I get back to my apartment at night, well, I would have been not only stress-free, but if something unexpected happens, I don't have to worry about it. And so, you know, um, oh, my flight gets delayed or something. Maybe my, my, my surface dies. I don't know. Yeah. It, let's say you're on your laptop and it's got two hours of battery left your it dies and your charger you realize you forgot your charger but you spent that two hours watching youtube and netflix it's like kind of wish i used that two hours to study instead because now i'm like oh shoot i gotta go study and then procrastination plays into all that but i'm gonna move on from this point because it's a little meh the point is um i know constantly that it's so easy to look back and and be like ah frick i, I wish i did my reviews this morning so that i can you know, do whatever. An opportunity might come up to go out with people at night. It's like, <sighs> I forgot to do my reviews. Sorry. And then you procrastinate more. But yeah, I used to have this old theory, input versus output. Input work states you, you block aside, you block aside <laughs> time for your calendar uh, and you say, I'm going to do input work. I'm going to put in uh, one hour of work on um, Japanese studying. Okay, great. And then there's output work where you say, okay, I'm going to block out one hour and get as far as I can with Japanese studying as possible. And I've come to believe that input is a BS theory. Um, and this is mostly because I tried it with work, with my full-time job. And, sorry, output. What is, what? 
Yeah, sorry. Output's the BS one. <laughs> um, time blocking is hard. Time blocking, the only good thing about it is that you can use past data for the future. Uh, anyway, that's aside the point. So input, I think, is the only thing worth it. If you put in three hours of work, you should go as far as you can. Because if you set aside a certain objective for an hour, Parkinson's law is going to kick in and you're going to use up all that time. Um which means that if you should have given yourself more time, let's say I'm doing 10 grammar lessons, I try to rush through them all in an hour. If I don't get them done, I feel bad. But if I do 10 grammar lessons, I finish in half an hour, then I you know, do nothing for half an hour, and that's not any fun. <laughs> um, so you should put aside time and work during that whole time is my whole point. And um, it's hard to focus sometimes. You know, Doing Anki reviews for an hour in a row is not the most enticing experience <laughs> it's got its got its thrills <laughs> not really um anyway enough about that uh i think something the the way the reason this is relevant to me at least and i guess to this is just youtube videos and you know someone asked me a little while ago like oh wh what's your video like how long does it take to make a video and it entirely depends uh the reading ramble that went up today for example I spent an hour and a half today on it and 40 minutes yesterday on it. And that was just editing. So, you know, just over two hours and a bit of editing that video. And I should have put in a little more time on the editing to make it a bit better. But reading rambles are early. I just release them. But if it's, you know, that typing video I've been putting off for a year, well, it's going to take several hours. And time becomes more of an estimate. I started using Toggle because I'd say, okay, let me put aside an hour in the morning to study Japanese. I use Toggle. All of a sudden, I look at it, and it's, oh, I only did like 30 minutes of reviews. I was just like walking around half the time. Um, and so context of editing for time and content. I don't know what that means. Time is more of an estimate. I do like that. I've kind of, anyway, I'm getting up on the main point of why I'm sitting down tonight. Sorry, 17 minutes in. Um Effectively, crunching for Japanese, the studying, is showing me, as I was talking at the about at the beginning, it's forcing this change in lifestyle. And all of a sudden, the goal is kind of secondary. I've had a few people say this now, but nothing bad happens when I fail this exam. If I fail this exam, there I'd be optimistic. If I f succeed, great. You know, odds are I succeed by getting a 50%, and that's above the statistical likelihood of just random chance, but it's, you know, it's nothing to brag about, so to speak. But it's still passing, and that's cool. And I can put that on something if I want to go teach English in Japan. But if I fail, I'm out 100 bucks. Um, but if I fail or succeed, either way, uh, I will have accelerated my learning to a degree which would not have been possible before. Because there, when language learning, you get used to a language. There's no goal, usually. And so having an exam is something to adapt to. And the thing is, I kind of talked about this in the whatever corner it is, but the, the studying video, JLPT, is in a month or whatever. Excuse me. <laughs> I kind of like having this thing. This is cool. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like learning how to study in the first place and how to spend time doing something you like, you enjoy. And... It's really frustrating, and I'm going to go dig into more of this in just a minute, but it's so frustrating knowing I do want to speak Japanese. Here are some reasons why. I Technically, I do want to do these Anki reviews. It feels great getting them down to zero. I'm not going to lie. And it feels good learning vocab and then watching a TV show or um, you know, uh, reading a little bit of a book or something and being like, I got through that, and I actually understood what just happened. My listening ability is so bad, sure, but it's these exercises that might suck in the moment, but I want to do them because I want to improve at this language. And so the goal itself of passing the exam becomes secondary, uh, both uh, in the sense of the learning endeavor. So I'm creating a foundation, right? Through all this studying, uh, passing or failing, it doesn't really matter. It's simply a benchmark to go through. You know, someone left a comment on that JLPT video of like, hey, don't rush, enjoy the process. I'm enjoying the process, honestly. It's stressful, sure, but I, I do enjoy that that busyness that comes with it and that, that intense schedule of reviews. Um, 
I have, you know, the flight to Brazil. I want to get through as much as this book as possible. I was, I wanted to get oh, through it over the last couple of days, but yeah, I'm kind of coming out of these mental battles and that's why I'm recording this. Anyway, the, the secondary thing, uh, so the goal itself is secondary in that it's not really the reason I'm learning it, but also it's because the real goal, and it's almost like I tricked myself into doing this because it, this was never conscious five months ago, is to create a lifestyle change and then also see what I'm capable of. I think everybody has limits, so don't take this the wrong way, but I like to push myself. Uh, and I think you should push yourself too. Obviously, don't push yourself past the breaking point. In my last uh, October reading ramble, um, I kind of said something that when I was editing, I was like, oh, yeah, 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 I kept thinking about that. And it's this notion that you shouldn't take breaks when you complete something. So, you know, when I take this N3 exam, I shouldn't take any breaks. I, You know, that day, I should finish any prep books I don't finish. Um, I should immediately start reading or, you know, building a new schedule. When You should take breaks, however, when you start to feel tired. So, you know, when I'm on an Anki thing and I'm on my second half an hour session at the end, I'm just getting frustrated at myself and being counterproductive, st like stop, record that video if you want, and then, you know, go lie down because I need to get some sleep in. Does that pick up? I don't know. Um, and so I'm creating this habit, I guess, but this general lifestyle change uh, of you know, learning to rest, but I'm doing it through pushing myself and I'm finding kind of where I break. Um, and I think I, unfortunately, I don't break suddenly <laughs> unless I do a backflip and land on my shoulder, but I do slide. I slip and, you know, I've held on pretty well, but, you know, I fell back into Twitter and, and YouTube, if you will. So two of my vices in some sense. Um, but yeah, and I think it's just an super important that all of a sudden I'm learning that the goal itself is great. But the thing that's really awesome is the lifestyle change. Um, you know, keto was great cause I lost weight, but in reality it was great because it, or losing weight, I should say was great cause it was, a, you know, I met my goal, but and I'm eating it once again, but it's because I'm, I feel better when I don't eat so much. I feel better when I'm working out. Um, I feel better when, you know, I get a bunch of new shirts because my last, like, you know, anyway, the blue, the blue's gone. It's, it's maroon long sleeve time. All of my shirts are this now. Um, I feel better living that way. And with Japanese, I feel better, you know, if I can live my life bilingually. My phone is in Japanese and I've been really used to that. Reading books in Japanese, watching anime in Japanese without subtitles. Um, it's very enjoyable. And I, I want to continue that and I want to get used to these things. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of that, right? This Japanese crunch. Sure. You know, don't rush the exam. Nothing's going to happen, but I need to rush because I want this to be my lifestyle. Uh, and then this last point here, I'm kind of scared of, not scared of, but I just kind of came about it, but it kind of comes from the perspective that I can watch myself from a third person view. And I don't want to be someone who comes back or finishes work, I guess, because I work from home. But let's just old school analogy. Suppose I go to the office, I come back from work and I just veg, um, for the whole time, both morning and evening before I leave. And when I come back and I don't want to be that person. Uh, nothing wrong with that, by the way. Um, if you're someone who wants to work, come back and chill. You do that. Um, I don't think it's a bad thing. In some sense, I envy it. Um, but I know that if I'm not actively doing things, uh, I just get sad <laughs> and depressed. Um, and, you know, so exploring Seattle with my, my dad and my sister, it was really good because it was to see them. But in general, I haven't gone out and been a tourist myself because... Oh, God, I should be home doing this, that, and that. And I know, take breaks, but I think do that, you know, this intense thing for two weeks and then take a whole weekend off as opposed to, you know, whatever. So, yeah, anyway, back to this notion of watching life from a third person. I would not want to watch a TV show of someone, or a montage, if you will, of someone uh, browsing through Twitter 
and then getting up to eat and then checking their email for the seventh time in the same hour. Uh, that doesn't that doesn't strike me as a good TV show. And that's kind of what I do sometimes. Um, you know, I, I, I've i been kind of thinking like, man, where does the time go? Like, how do I only have this much time on toggle for both my, my job and Japanese? And it, it happens in the small bits of the day. It happens when I get up and make lunch and go get a snack and when I go get mail or when I go do laundry or find those small things that seem like small tasks but add up. And, you know, for me, I think to get rid of this, it's kind of like taking that third person view and saying, okay, no YouTube in the day, no Netflix in the day, no Twitter in the day, save it for the end of the day, do it at night. Um, you know, it's always that thing of like, oh, I'll do this episode and then I'll study. Uh, and I found that whenever I went, okay, 30 minutes of Anki and then you can watch this and then go to bed. I usually just skip the watching part and then go to bed. Um, cause that thing will always be there. And it's just hard to remember. Um, but yeah, so what really hit me today, 26 minutes in, uh, is the notion that there are all these possible chances of things happening. Um, there's a chance of one of my videos getting really popular, right? And, and you know, some notes video. Maybe this really strikes it out, strikes with someone or, or something. Um, and I like making this kind of content. Maybe I, I, you know, maybe make this into a podcast thing. That would be so fun. Um, but doing that or learning Japanese so that should the day come where all of a sudden they, you know, someone needs someone to speak Japanese to translate or, or something, you know, with technology these days, it's not the biggest deal. But um, I found a Kempo, 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 Kempo. Why does that sound wrong? Kempo. Yeah, I found a Kempo place, the martial arts with the wooden sword. Um, sorry, apologies for kind of bastardizing that. Uh, and, you know, it would be cool if all of a sudden, you know, maybe they were speaking some Japanese. The the sensei instructor looked looked like he, he was from Japan. Um, and that would be cool, you know, in, in some of these situations. And um, a situation in, you know, in my job in which I might need to be relied on for something or you know, working on that project in Golang and then all of a sudden something comes up that needs to be done in Golang for some huge opportunity. I, I don't know. You know, for a while it was make YouTube videos as my editing portfolio so I could show people and then I could be hired as an editor for someone. Um, all these things are possible realities is what I'm trying to get at. And you can choose one. Sort of you get to choose which reality you are most optimally prepared for. And this is what I believe is luck. Luck is the intersection of preparedness and random chance. And so there's this juxtaposition, so I wrote, between choosing a future and then breaking down an action for each of those futures. Uh, and then, and I guess the juxtaposition is not, do I don't know how that's a juxtaposition. What? Anyway, um, watching YouTube videos doesn't help me for any reality. Watching TV doesn't help me for any reality. It's good to to let the present have a moment. Have it like, hey, present? Yeah. Saturday mornings, you watch Spy X and My Hero. 100% go for it. But don't do it all day. Don't watch a video all day. Don't go through YouTube all day. Listen to Cold Turkey. Let it block you. Don't un undo newsfeed eradicator. Twitter and whatever drama can wait. Twitter's going to survive, although it's interesting and whatever. Choose which future you want. Break down the action for each of those futures. And then take the opportunity, opportunity to go and make that future happen. Um... It's easier said than done. Don't. Uh, this is not a just do it and it will happen thing. This is a sense of there's a version of me sitting here, standing here, and it's like an astral projection, if you will. This is how I visualize it. And I'm looking at a version of me, you know, take this section of my desk, or for sake of example, let's take this desk. This is where I have my work laptop set up. Oh, I can do this because... <laughs> the microphone extends. Um, yeah. It's wired, so be it. 
you know, there's a version of me sitting here studying Japanese, doing my job for hours and working hard. And then there's a, a parallel version of me sitting here watching YouTube and whatever. And whenever I choose to sit down and watch YouTube, I choose this universe over here. I choose the version of me that does that. Now, every action is a choice, and every choice has consequences. And consequences are not inherently bad, I don't think. And so it's really hard to remember that everything is a choice because you can keep telling yourself, okay, just one more, or it's fine for now. But there's this really important concept of non-negotiability. Um, and I think if I can get to the point, there's a tipping point for me where I, you know, there's a difference between... Okay, uh, refill my water bottle, sit down, go do Anki. And, okay, refill your water bottle. And I go refill and I put it down. And I say, all right. It's the mental thing that happens of just like, frick, I'm about to say this. I'm about to really, really mean it. Let's do Anki. Right now, 25 minutes. Um, and that's the hardest part <laughs> is saying it and being like, Break. I'm about to really mean this. Uh, and that's something, you know, I don't know if I sound like a motivational speaker or something right now. That's not my intention. Um, not sound like, but, you know, I th say these things and I'm thinking of like, we do not negotiate with terrorists or whatever, David Goggins and Jocko Wallink and whatever. But, yeah, I mean, that's kind of this this thing I've been struggling with, all of this. This last 31 minutes is what I've been struggling with. Um, you know, how does my lifestyle change depending on certain factors? There is a world in which I want people to be a part of it, certain people to be a part of it. I want to find my people, so to speak. Um, there is a world in which, you know, if this happens, I want to be able to do this. Um, and w every time I sit down and go, oh, let me check Twitter real quick, I take a step away from that future. And I, this kind of connects to, you know, Pressfield's view and War of Art, that things exist on some holier plane. I don't think it's holy, per se. Uh, but I really hope I can burp and have it not, like, picked up. But these futures exist. If you want to believe it, you know, another p way of putting it is the multiverse. There is a, a, a universe in which I run a four-minute mile. And I can choose that universe in some sense. Obviously, there are factors that are beyond my control. Um, right now, my left leg is... <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Um, there is a future in which I go to Japan and get around fine and speak. It's a, very more, like a lot more mundane, right? There is a future in which I'm teaching English in Japan. Whether there are things that have happened now that will prevent that from happening, I don't know. You know, maybe all of a sudden Japan closes its borders again and they close them for the rest of the whatever. That sucks, of course. Very unlikely. But my point is, I have no idea if that's going to happen or not. But I can control my own actions to the best of my ability. And that means learning Japanese. So then you take another step back. And so I'm choosing the future in which I learn Japanese. When I sit down, I'm doing either cards or grammar reviews. I have to actively choose those. And the least that I need to do is just show up. Um, is just sit down and be like, all right, I'm going to do Anki now. Open Anki and go. Not check Twitter one more time. Not like another YouTube video, whatever. Um, there's, you know, I felt better after doing Anki the first time. Then the second time I felt good enough to record this. And I, even though I was frustrated at the end of those words, the flight tomorrow, I'm going to be, st I'm going to study the whole time. And it's one of those things where I already know, like two nights ago, I wrote a little morning plan and I, I was like, all right, I'll get up at six, you know, da, da, da. and I guess what I didn't do. Um, but now it's like, you know, okay. Oh yeah. I'm going to study on the flight. Yada, yada. Or is it, <sighs> okay, I'm going to sit down in this plane seat, uncomfortable as it might be for nine hours. And I'm going to study. If I get uh, tired, sure, just hit the last 25 minutes, stop, take a break, but then get back to it. And I won't have Wi-Fi, so no freaking Twitter, dude. 
Anyway, uh, it's almost 40 minutes. I don't want to cut this up very much. Um, but yeah, that's a light, uh, some notes on personal growth habits, lifestyles, and I guess dreams, you know, uh, I don't think anyone has it figured out, but I think a lot of people know what their dream is. I am not one of those people, but I seek to discover that one day. And I know that if that dream involves Japanese or not, if that dream involves making YouTube videos or not, if that dream involves balancing well or not, if that dream involves being hydrated or not, I don't know. I'm kind of going off the rails here, but um, the time's going to pass anyway. And I might as well, worst case, knock things off that don't matter. Because in 2023, I want to make things. Every three months or every month, I haven't decided. But I want to try art again. I want to build an app. I want to work on things. I want to excel in my job. I want to keep making videos. I do want videos to go somewhere. But none of those happen if every time I sit down, I choose to delay the current thing by watching YouTube or Twitter. And again, it's not like you can't watch any of these things. I I don't know if I'm saying this to me or whoever's watching this, but you just gotta you gotta choose everything with intention and therefore you have moderation. So yeah. That's that. Thanks for watching and or listening to the whole thing, maybe. I don't know, maybe I'll put it on cat I know. I'm I don't I'm so obsessed with the algorithm. It's so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll just upload an uncut 40-minute video. <laughs> Unreal. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, maybe this will turn into a podcast one day. Let me know what you think in the, the comments down below. Um, could, w I have a cool format in mind. I do want to make a podcast, but uh, it would probably be something like this, and apparently I can keep it up for 40 minutes. So, yeah, have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you in the next one. Peace.